Hi, I'm Rita Wilkins, also known as the Downsizing Designer. So I want to talk to you about a subject today that I get asked about all the time. And that's what is right sizing and, and how do you how do you right size versus downsize too much or stay in your big home? So today I want to talk about five simple steps that I've created to right size your next home. So I don't know about you, but when, when you were locked down over this past year during COVID, did you start noticing things around your home that either you hadn't noticed before or you probably just put on the back burner and, and ignored? Um, for instance, how much stuff and, and how, how many possessions you've actually accumulated over all of these years, things like boxes in the attic, um, in, this, in the basement or in the garage, and many of them, you have no idea what's even inside of them. And have, did you notice also what spaces that are in your house that you really work and, and that you really use and some that just aren't working and that you rarely use? So if you're like many of us, um, you might have discovered um, wasted space. So rooms that you don't use regularly are basically wasted space. Um, and that would be like dining rooms, guest rooms, um, other areas in your house. And, and that's something that we'll explore in just a few minutes, but rooms that you wish you had more space uh, um, for, or that they were better laid out. So for instance, um, more space for his and her offices, that became a very um, visible need during COVID and, and even now so when more and more people are choosing to work from home. And then a better kitchen layout because there might have been more than one of you cooking in the kitchen um, and you needed just um, better space to work in. Other ones might be homework areas um, where kids were learning from home. And then another one is just private retreat space. You know, we all need that private time and private space. And I think during COVID, many people found there just wasn't enough of that in their homes. So if you're looking at your home, through a different set of eyes and saying, is this the right time for us to find a home that better suits your current lifestyle, your age, um, the stage of life? This um, home that you're looking for is actually called the right size home. So right sizing is different from downsizing. And many of you know me as the downsizing designer, but um, right sizing is very much a part of what we do because it should be a house that um, actually fits your current lifestyle. So right sizing is different from downsizing because it's not necessarily smaller. It's just the right size for you at this time of your life. So if it's a good fit um, for what you want and what you need, and it's also a good fit for the things you no longer want or need. So this is a process that I've created and it's a process for determining what right size is for you. So there's five simple steps. And the first one is know why you want to or need to um, right size. So just know up front though, that selling a, a long-term family home is never easy. It's emotional and it's a lot of work. And also know that maybe your partner, your spouse may not agree with you that it is time to, to right size. Um, but there are certain reasons to at least consider. Uh, so one is um, your life events and life circumstances. I call this the, the have tos. Um, so that could be finances. So many people have lost their jobs during COVID and they just can't afford to live there anymore. So that would be a have to find something that is um, better suited for their, their finances. Another one might be death of a loved one. Um, the house is just too big to maintain. Um, it's too expensive to maintain. Um, another one is divorce. So, you know, a house that was well suited for two or four or five people is maybe just too big. And so looking for a right size in the case of divorce. And the last one might be health. So should you have a sudden health issue, those stairs might be impossible for you anymore to um, to go up. So again, right sizing might be something for you to consider. So in addition to life event or life circumstances, the, the have tos, um, another category, I call it the shoulds. So 
a life stage. So for instance, you are an empty nester, the kids have grown, they have their own homes now. And as an empty nester, you might look around at this big house that once was great for your, for your larger family, um, but now it just doesn't make sense. So I should consider right sizing. Another one is retirement or pre-retirement where, you know, your activities have changed. You're not going to work. You may not choose to work ever again. Um, you might travel more. So the size of the home that you currently have may be too big and it may not be right for what you're after. And then the other one is aging. So a life stage um, is aging, a natural process. Um, you may want to right size to be closer to family, hospitals, um, medical care, that kind of thing. And then also the other category I call the want to. So you want to change your lifestyle. You want to right size. You're ready for change. So you might have lived in the city and maybe now you're you're more interested in living near the water. That's, that's what I'm looking at right now. Um, so it's, it's a want to um, change lifestyle and finding that perfect fit for that house or apartment or condo, whatever it is that will suit your lifestyle right now. So the second thing to consider when you are um, considering right size is know what you want and need and that you'll use. So this is an important step and it, it's really important you take time to just determine what's right for you right now and also for the next you know three to five years. So moving once is one thing, but when you have to move a second or even a third time, and I've had clients, um, you know, they didn't pick the right size, so then this one was still too big or maybe it was too small, so they had to change again. That's called double downsizing. That's just a tremendous expense, unnecessary if you take time up front to know what's going to be right for you for the next couple of years. And then weigh your options. What's going to be the optimal space that works for you um, for that next, um, say, three to five years? And if you're not ready yet, and many people aren't, this takes time. You're not 100% sure exactly what you want to do, so you might consider renting versus buying. Um, that was a choice I made a few years ago. I'd always owned my own home, but I'm now choosing to rent because it gives me the flexibility and the mobility to um, to move around if I choose to. And I also like to add in that there's just less responsibility. So when you know what you want, need, and will use, um, just know that, you know, life changes. Um, it's not static. So what was once that perfect house when you had your, you know, two, three, or four kids um, may no longer be that perfect house. And then the second thing is to determine the kind of lifestyle that you want. So city, country, beach, mountain, um, what kind of house do you want? So a condo, a townhouse, um, you know, a, a single family dwelling. And determine what kind of um, house that you need. It, it's certainly having to do with, you know, the size, also the amenities. So if you are aging and you might consider one floor living. So the third question, or I'm sorry, the third step is to, it's just practical matters. So when you're right sizing, um, what size fits your budget? So homes can, that you can easily afford because right sizing is not necessarily um, downsizing and it's also not necessarily less expensive. So homes that you can, you know, easily afford that suits your budget, um, that gives you peace of mind and that you can actually enjoy without having to stress out over finances. Um, consider the costs associated with the move itself because that is another thing that has to be fit into the budget. So practical matters also are size that fits your current needs. So proximity to family, medical care, one floor living, um, walkable communities, all of those are things to consider um, in terms of right sizing. And then um, right sizing that fits your current lifestyle. So if you want to be in a community to avoid loneliness, um, you want to meet new friends, it's an active lifestyle, 
that would be something to consider. Walkability, um, you know, activities, safety, you know, safety is certainly a concern. All of these have to do with practical matters when you are right sizing. And then a fourth step is to take only what you need will use that you'll use and also that you love. So moving to a smaller space forces you to pare down um, all of those possessions that you don't want, need, or even use anymore and to make room for that, that new life. So the last step in my five steps is to ask yourself what I call a thousand questions. Years ago, my boys would tell my design clients, you know my mom's gonna ask you a thousand questions. And I laughed at that, but actually it's so true because in order for you to, uh, for me to understand you as a design client, I had to get in your shoes and walk around them. I had to know a lot about you. So in terms of right sizing, ask yourself those thousand questions to determine what's right for you. So as you look around your current home, is there enough space? Is there too much space? How much space is actually being used day to day? And this is a hard one for people to admit, but how much of your home right now is being used to store all of your stuff? So in other words, your home might have become a storage facility. But if you say, you know, you walk around and let's say four to five rooms are, are filled with boxes and closets full of stuff and it's basically storing that so when you're right sizing um you are forced to you know look at all of these things and not take them with you for sure so how much of your space is right now being used to store all of your stuff and then another question to ask is what percentage of your home is not being used at all and frequently this happens so it's the extra guest bedrooms it's um I don't know, it's it's game rooms, things that on your day-to-day -day living right now, you're not using that at all. And then look at the percentage of your home that is most used. You know, typically this is kitchen, family room, master bedroom, home office, bathrooms, so forth. But when you start to look at the percentage of space, so if you have a 12 to 15 um, room home, um, what percentage is not being used? and weigh the costs of that. You know, so just calculate out how much your monthly expenses are and, and percentage-wise, how much is that costing you to heat, to maintain, um, and, and the time um, consideration for, for having that, that home. So, and then the, another question to ask is, um, what's missing in your current, current home that you wish you had? I call this kind of the wish list, but if you're right-sizing, that wish list should be, you know, really well filled. So whether it's that dual home office, so you have two home offices, um, where you have homework centers, um, whether you have um, more individual entertaining space for your teenagers or for yourself. Um, another thing you might consider is outdoor um, working area, outdoor retreat space. Those are all things that if you are right sizing, it should be right for you. So I think you can see this is a topic that number one, I'm passionate about, and number two, that I could explore for hours. If you want to hear more about right sizing um, on my blog, on my Facebook Live, on my website, um, please let me know. Um, comment below, also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, or email me at Rita Wilkins at Rita Wilkins .com or, or um, go to my website, um, Rita Wilkins at Rita Wilkins .com. I'd love to hear from you. So um, please comment and let me know how I can help you. Have a great day.